In this presentation, we're going to look at ordinal logistic regression, okay? And what we're trying to do is predict ordinal variables. So a good example of this would be from the diamonds data set from ggplot2. So what I'm going to do here is load up the library ggplot2 and just have a look at this data set called diamonds, okay? Now, we actually uh, are given a lot of information here about each of the categories, okay? I'm going to use this variable in particular, cut, because I think it's a bit clear about the nature of this variable. So let's have a look at cut. So what I'm going to do first is use the glimpse command from dplyr. Oops, just brand new. There we go. So glimpse diamonds. There we go. So yeah, ordinal variable, um, ideal, premium, good, very good, and so on. Okay, I'm going to use all of the other variables uh, to try and predict it. So we'll come back to that shortly. Now, also what I'm going to do is I'm going to subset this data set because it has 53,000 variables, which is quite a lot. I don't need that many, really. So I'll just come to that shortly. What I'm going to do now is get the levels of this variable. So the command is levels, and we just state the name of the variable, diamonds, dollar sign, cut, there we go. So fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal. So those are the five categories, the five rankings of cut, okay? So what we're going to do is try and predict that. So just actually, just while we're there, a couple of other commands that are useful is class, ordered factor, um, maybe mode, numeric, not that interesting, um, glimpse, summary, let's do summary. Uh, we seemingly have only a handful of fair, well, out of 50,000, that's not that much really, whereas we have 21,000 ideals. Okay, that doesn't matter. So, um, what we're going to do is use all of the other variables to predict that. So go back to glimpse. So carrot, cut, clarity, all of these variables here. Now, if you want to find out what the names of these variables are about, like X, Y, and Z, just go to diamonds. Okay, help diamonds. Okay, I, I'll, I'll save that for another time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use random forest. Okay, so I have two jobs here. So I'm going to install the package random forest. And I'm going to call that library. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to pause the video for a second while I set this up. It's just a little bit boring to look at it. There we go. Unpaused library random forest. Um, yeah, that's okay. So that's all set up. So now we can fit our model. So the command is random forest uh, cut explained by everything else data equals diamonds. Okay. Now I'm not going to run that partly because it's just so big. Okay. But what I'm going to do is create a subset of the diamonds data set, and we call that the training data set, and a subset of it, which I'm going to call the testing data set. Okay, so I'm going to use dplyr sample frac for this, or sample n even. Now, I'm just sort of, this is just sort of cheating a bit, because correctly, there's other things you could do, like using uh, carrot and so on, where you can create a data partition, okay? Now, I'm just going to take it very simply here, uh, take a very simple, simplistic approach to creating a training data set and a testing data set. So go to call one diam train, and that is, I'll just take out 10,000 instances from diamonds, Ten thousand cases and diam test, which I'll just take out 
5,000. Okay. Now, so I'm about to run that again, that model. Okay. And I'm going to call it my dime model. Now it's going to take a moment to uh, run. It's got going there. So again, what I'm going to do is pause the video. It just would take too long if I used all 53,000 observations. So we're back and we are done. So let's just have a look at my model, my dime model. Okay. And here it gives us a sense of how well this model fits. Okay. So there is 246 correctly identified as fair, 588 correctly identified as good, 1130 correctly identified as very good, and so on. Now everything else off the diagonal is a misclassification. But it's important to remember that there is degrees of misclassification. For example, fair and good are levels that are right beside each other, okay? So it's close enough if you call a good fair or a fair good, okay? So it's a mistake, but not a huge mistake. Whereas down here, we're mis misclassifying ideal as fair or fair as ideal over in the other corner. So that's a quite large mistake. So it's a sort of, there's degrees of error there off the diagonal, okay? Anyway, what we're gonna do now is see, is this model good at other data, okay? So predict my dime model and dime test. So there we go. Those are all the predictions there, okay. So let's save them up. My test predictions, okay. And let's tabulate them. So my table dime test cut my test predictions. Not so bad, not so bad. There's 217 misclassified here and 206 misclassified here. With that, that that's actually the big worry for me because that's it's not on the adjacent diagonal. Actually, apart from that, I'm, I'm actually sort of thinking that's okay, that model. I mean, it's uh, four, four. Now, actually, here's the thing. There's no standard accuracy statistics or model metric statistics used for this sort of thing. So it's essentially the model is the only, this the model, uh, this table is the main thing we have to appraise the model, okay? Which is not perfect. If somebody came up with a statistic that could help us there, that would be great. Anyway, that's the end of the presentation.